in this section, we want to talk about collecting and organizing data. Data is used to answer all sorts of questions in the world, um, but a reality of using data to answer questions is that sometimes we can't get data on every single person or every single object that we need. For instance, if we're trying to collect data on how much a household spends on groceries each week. It's not very practical or probable that we're going to be able to get that number for every single household across the state, across the country. So what we typically rely on is sample data, where we take some smaller group that we hope is representative of the larger population and draw some conclusions based off those groups, or based off those results. The key, though, is getting a representative sample, and we have a variety of different, different techniques for trying to do that. The first one we'll talk about is a simple random sample. We call it simple just because there's no more complexity involved in how we choose people. It's just at random, but that can actually be pretty difficult to do. The idea being that I just sort of randomly select people out of this group. But even me doing that as a human, I can't really generate a random list. I've got some bias or I see bigger, smaller clusters. So typically use technology in some way to randomly select those people out of the population. But out of that group of people, we would select some number of people n, and those people would constitute our sample. We can build from there to come up with more complex ways of generating sa random samples. The next would be a systematic random sample. In a systematic random sample, we would arrange people in a particular order, say from shortest to tallest, or by age, in some specific order. And then what we would do is select every nth person, nth person. So let's say we would select every third person, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. There's another kind of person that's missing there. So one, two, three, one, two, three, three, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So if we have people arranged in a specific order, and then we choose a specific number to say the third person, fifth person, and we do that to generate our random sample. We also have stratified sampling. In stratified sampling, we split people into groups. So for instance, if this first cluster of people, we organize them so that those were all of our first year students created another group that had all of our sophomore students, juniors, and then a last group consisting of all seniors. Then what we would do is choose a specific number of people from each group. So then we would randomly choose, say, three, five, eight, however many first year students. We would choose the exact same number from our group of sophomores the exact same number from our group of juniors, and the exact same number from our group of seniors. Stratified sampling is a good approach if what we want to do is make sure we have representation from multiple different groups, like we would in this case. We can also consider cluster sampling. Cluster sampling is somewhat similar to stratified sampling in the sense that we would have people who are clustered into groups for some specific reason, whether it's um, the class that they're enrolled in, a uh, place that they work at. What we, would be, what we would do in this case, though, is choose a certain number of groups at random, but then survey everyone inside that group. So if we were to choose three groups at random, then we would survey all of these people all of these people, and all of these people. 
And then our last type of sampling that we can look at is referred to as convenience sampling. Convenience sampling uh, is kind of really just what it sounds like. We just sample in a way that's really convenient and easy. So for instance, if I'm this first person and I have a question that I want to ask, I'm just going to reach out to everybody who's closest to me and ask them their response. This is a bad method for sampling. Convenient sampling is the worst at getting us our truly random sample that reflects and represents the entire larger population that we're trying to study. So if, uh, if sampling is done using convenient sampling, those results are generally tend to be fairly meaningless. We want to make sure that data is being sampled in a way that generates that random representative sample through one of these other methods.